We move ahead to the next presentation. May I invite Professor Sandeep Bansal, who is currently Head Department of Cardiology at the Vardhaman Mahavir Medical College and Saptarjung Hospital in New Delhi. Uh, Professor Bansal joins us for the next nine minutes to speak on Saraglitazar. Is it really effective and promising molecule? Uh, Professor Bansal, please. Chairpersons, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this afternoon, after, after such heated talks on uh, statins and high-dose statins, I'll take you to uh, another realm, and that is the non-LDL uh, uh, area. And uh, I propose to talk about uh, my talk in the following manner. I'll talk about what is the concept of non-HDL cholesterol. Then I'll discuss about why triglycerides are important, and are they important? and how they are important. I'd also finally touch upon saroglitazar, which is a glitazar. It's a new uh, drug entity, a new clinical entity, or NCE as we call, and uh, probably the first molecule from our own country uh, which has made a dent and is uh, making big headways. Uh, <clears throat> we start with this. Uh, Dr. Sarita talked about uh, high dose of statins. We know that uh, even after high dose of statins have been given, 70 to 80 percent of risk remains even after intensive statin therapy. Uh, what are the contributors to this uh, uh, high uh, residual risk? We know there are certain lifestyle factors which are highlighted here. And uh, among the lipids, it's actually the non-HDL area. Uh, what is non-HDL? Uh, this slide actually shows us the entire gamut of the various lipids that are there. The HDL, as we know, is a, is a good cholesterol because it causes reverse transport. LDL, we all know, is bad, and it is, uh, you know, it is, it is joined by EPO-B, B for bad, so you have EPO-B with LDL. And uh, <clears throat> thereafter, we have the various particles which are triglyceride-rich. But uh, if we look in, the, uh, in this cartoon, we find that the blue portion is triglycerides and the yellow is the cholesterol. So remember, even though uh, they have a dominant portion of triglyceride, there's a fair percentage, uh, there's a fair portion of cholesterol also in each of these components. So if we subtract the uh, HDL, from total cholesterol, we get what is called as the non-HDL cholesterol, which consists of LDL and which consists of all other particles which will contain triglycerides. We've taken care of the uh, LDL cholesterol with the help of statins. What remains is the other particles which are rich in triglycerides. There are indicators which say that non-HDL perhaps is a better indicator of risk than LDL cholesterol. This is a meta-analysis of over a lakh 30,000 patients in American Journal of Cardiology three years ago, which said that non-HDL outperforms APOB, which was touted to be the best indicator uh, in Salim Yusuf's uh, uh, study a couple of years ago. Uh, it has also been seen that if you lower the HDL, if, if, you lower the, uh, if you lower the LDL cholesterol to less than 100, but your non-HDL cholesterol continues to be high, it is riskier than actually being able to reduce the non-HDL while the LDL continues to be high. The risk is 32% higher if the LDL cholesterol has been lowered, but the non-HDL non target has not been reached. Underlining again that it is an important factor. Are the triglycerides causally related? These were, this is a meta-analysis of 29 studies which showed that triglycerides are related to an increased chance of having coronary artery disease. If, if I was asked this question till about one and a half years ago, I would not have still agreed that triglycerides and coronary artery disease are related. But in the Lancet last year, there were three important papers. The first one, a 93,000 patient study from Copenhagen Heart, uh, called the Copenhagen Heart Study, which clearly showed that higher levels of triglycerides are associated with MI, ischemic heart disease, and total mortality. There was another paper uh, which studied the genetic aspects and found 
uh, that triglycerides were correlated with cardiovascular disease. Uh, it was further seen that with every quintile of increase in triglycerides, uh, there was an increase in the chance of, uh, <coughs> uh, chance of coronary artery disease. There was a further analysis in Nature Genetics in November 2013, which actually studied and tried to see whether triglycerides were causally related or it was an epiphenomenon. And they concluded that triglyceride-rich lipoproteins causally influence the occurrence of coronary artery disease. Uh, how does this happen? It is believed that the, these particles, which are triglyceride-rich, when they go inside the intima, they cause a greater inflammation. Uh, LDL cholesterol does cause the inflammation, but these triglyceride-containing particles, which also have LDL cholesterol associated with them, cause a greater inflammation, and that is for responsible for the uh, causation of this. Will lowering triglycerides help? There is some hint that, yes, lowering the triglycerides also helps in lowering the risk of developing coronary artery disease. In India, we know uh, from the India Diab study, which is a 17,000 patient study, that the commonest side effect, the commonest lipid abnormality is low HDL followed by a high triglyceride, and this is particularly common in the diabetic population. Uh, coming to the drug proper, the PPAR agonists, or uh, the glitazars as they are called, have two modes of action. One is a fibrate-like action, which is going to lower the triglycerides, and the other one is a thiazolid-like -TZ uh, action, which is going to cause a glucose lowering. Uh, glitazars are not new. A lot of us who know about these drugs would recall that in the late 2000s, uh, there were at least two drugs, muraglitazar and tisaglitazar, which reached stage two, but then they were withdrawn. Why they were withdrawn? Because if we see the PPAR alpha and the gamma activity, we find that there is a spectrum of activity. Uh, the tisaglitazar had a PPAR gamma activity but had less PPAR alpha activity. Saroglitazar has a more um, balanced activity. And when the uh, reason why the glitazars had side effects was analyzed, it was found that you need to balance the hypoglycemic activity and the hypotriglyceridemic activity. And when you start to hike the dose for achieving a balance between the two, then the, uh, the drug causes a lot of side effects. And this was the reason that uh, none of the glitazars that were there earlier were successful. Uh, Steve Nissen, a couple of years ago, said that among the glitazars, each drug needs to be taken individually. And in that background, saroglitazar came in with a two-year preclinical carcinogenicity study. Uh, it has a linear pharmacokinetic, and uh, it was found to be safe even up to 128 milligrams, though we use only four milligrams clinically. Uh, it was shown to be effective in lowering the triglycerides and also lowering the A1C, and was approved about three years ago by the DCGI for diabetic dyslipidemia, particularly hypertriglyceridemia. There have been several studies from our own country. We keep on saying we don't have data, we don't have data. These are studies conducted by some of the best known endocrinologists in our own country, the PRESS-5 and the PRESS-6 study. There are a number of studies which have been presented within this year across the world uh, both at the American Diabetes Association and the European uh, Association for Study in Diabetes, EAST. And these studies have been stupendous. They have shown that staroglitazar lowers triglycerides by as much as 45%. And in, uh, depending upon the baseline HbA1c, it also lowers the, uh, <coughs> it, it also lowers the HbA1c. It has been found to be safe as far as the cardiac parameters are concerned and the renal and liver parameters are concerned. And my final slide, if you can give me the, just the final slide. Uh, so to conclude, ladies and gentlemen, the triglycerides are clearly related to causation of coronary artery disease. They are causally related. Beyond the statins and LDL, they are an important entity to reckon with. Dual, dual PPAR gamma agonists are a class of drugs with significant 
inter-drug heterogeneity. We should not be, uh, you know, uh, we should not be bogged down by the fact that several of the glitazars were uh, not successful. They were not successful because they did not have proper profiles. Saroglitazar does have that. We have this as a new clinical entity from India. It is effective and safe and is indicated for diab diabetic dyslipidemias, particularly hypertriglyceridemia. Thank you for your kind attention. Uh, do we have any questions, Mr. Chairman, for the speaker? Okay. Thank you very much, Professor Bansal. If there are